Hi everyone and good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for our webinar today. We're going to be talking about embedding JReport into your OEM and SaaS applications and uh, you know, uh, just basically giving you some examples of our customers. We're going to show you a uh, you know, live demo a bit later uh, and uh, really, really excited to have you today. So happy holidays and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So to sort of frame you know, the, the beginning of the discussion, I wanted to just start off and tell you a bit about the platform on a high level. So, um, you know, over the years, we've we've had you know the great experience of working with many of our flagship customers like IBM, Visa, uh, to to really hone hone JReport, add new features, and make it a very advanced embedded data visualization platform. So, you know, how do we do that? There's a couple key areas that we want to address uh, address today. So, first of all, JReport is high performance and scalable, um, giving you features like intelligent push down technology, um, which allows you to you know basically offset query processing down to your database. Your, data, your database is going to handle computations and then push, push aggregation result sets uh, to be stored in in-memory cubes so that when you access that data in the in-memory cube, it's a lot quicker um, and you can access it just a lot faster, more streamlined. Um, and then server clustering, which gives you the ability to remove single points of failure in your system, uh, makes your report a lot more scalable. So that's the first part. Next, you know, self-service ability through ad hoc is a key component of JReport too. We want the system to be so easy that anyone in your organization can use it from your most basic end users, you know, up a step to your, to your more advanced power users, and then finally your IT administrators when designing these reports. So you know, we give you a, a wide range of interactive, interactive charts, controls, and widgets to design these reports with so that everyone in your organization can, can use, uh, can get a lot out of the system. And then finally, flexibility is the key part of, of JReport. So we give you access to, uh, you know, to connect to any of your data sources, relational, uh, big data sources, and cloud sources. And we've added a lot of, um, added a lot of new, new data sources as well, and we'll continue to as the product you know, grows and grows. Uh, so next, deliver, the ability, ability to deliver your reports anywhere from PC through the browser, through, uh, through mobile sources. When, you know, you don't want your users to be tied to it to their PC. They can access it on the go. We have a native mobile app, which we'll get into a bit later. And you know, as the key part of today's talk is embeddability, obviously JReport needs to be very customizable and embeddable to give you a great you know way to meld seamlessly into your host application and adapt to the look and feel. So with that said, let's let's zoom into a bit uh, a bit more about how we fit into the marketplace. So there's a, a graphical representation here. On the top left, you have the more traditional BI platforms. Um, you know, these, these are, these are um, going to be more, much more expensive. Uh, you know, they're going to give you a lot, a lot of features, typically very, very powerful feature set, but they're often difficult to, difficult to seamlessly embed into your application and move off of long term. So that's a, that's a huge investment you're making there. On the bottom right, you have the more simplistic open source solutions, which which will be a little bit more, uh, you know, easier to embed because by their very nature they, they expose their entire code base to you. But with that said, they're also, they also have much more limited feature set and it's community based so it's not like JReport which is a commercial tool which has been honed over the years, um, you know, with, with the help of our, our you know, commercial, uh, you know, global customer base. So that's a good segue into where we fit into the market. Um, JReport is the best of both worlds. So we covered traditional BI. So on the left, um, you know, JReport not only gives you the powerful feature set of the traditional BI platforms, but also the ease of embedding of you know the the open source platforms. And on the price side, we're typically a lot cheaper than the traditional BI platforms, and also, also you know, most often we're, we're more inexpensive than the commercial versions of those open source solutions as well. So our our niche in the marketplace is embedding. We want you to be able to embed JReport seamlessly into your application. And since that's the focus of today's talk, I want to frame it by talking about, you know, the types of different applications that you can JR embed JReport in. And many, many of these terms I'm sure you're familiar with already. Um, OEM, we're referring to customers that, you know, would embed JReport into their products, uh, you know, to ship off to their customers that might host host uh, you know, their application on-premise. could be behind their own firewall on their own server. And then software uh, as a service is hosted in the cloud. It's a subscription access model, um, and it's typically browser-based access for internal or external, external users. So, so those are the two you know, types of delivery. Uh, we work with all different types of applications and try to make it as easy as possible for you. 
and to zoom in on our global customer base here, I don't want to dive too deep into any of these, you know, into all these customers. We don't have enough time for that today. But I want you to get uh, by looking at this at this, you know, graphic here. Just take a look and see how many different industries we work at work with. I mean, we work across all industries globally. And today we're talking about embedding. So I can click on a re on an item and drill down. For instance, to territory. For instance, I can right-click up here and uh, switch to a completely different value. Let's say we want to do product type. And let's say we want to uh, see product type by year. I can just drag year in up above that. And now you can see it's split out by 2011 and 2012. So the user can take an existing report that you've created and really modify it to be any report that you want with the metadata that, that you have provided. In addition, they're not limited to that. They can actually create their own uh, formulas and create their own measures and add more things onto the report that you didn't even think about. So uh, particularly for OEM and software as a service type uh, applications, you can't think of every report that your customers may want to use. And you don't want them coming back every day and saying, well, this report was really nice, but uh, I want it by territory and not by region. Uh, and then you have to have a developer go modify that and give them a special version of the report or make a new report and give it to everybody. Uh, this way, almost everything on a report is configurable uh, if you give the, the users permission to do that. And they can save their, their own version uh, without writing over uh, your, your production version. There's also uh, another style of report. And this is uh, we call a web report because it's designed specifically for the web. Uh, again, you have uh, a set of multiple components on here. Uh, we can drill down, for instance, on 2012 and look at each of the individual quarters. Uh, again, we, if we want to drill on North America, we can simply click on that and drill down uh, to the different countries uh, in North America. Uh, we can also take a, a table like this. This is a table. This is a cross tab. Uh, we can take a table and switch any of the groupings that we want. So let's say instead of category, we want country. But by adding country, there's a lot more than just the categories. Uh, so we can put component navigation in here automatically so the user can go through and uh, click on each of these and see uh, all of the data for all the countries. If we export this to one of the other formats, then this would expand and you would see all the data uh, in the printout or, or PDF report. So I hope this gives you an idea of some of the uh, various things that you can do as far as drilling and switching uh, columns and things like that in JReport. But let me show you a few more things. So this one actually had a parameter, a couple of parameters. And the user can very easily go in and modify these parameters at any time and rerun the report and save those uh, parameters as his own uh, default uh, parameters. And we had uh, turned that off so that it didn't prompt the user for the parameters when we ran the report. It uses the default values that the user had saved. And so if we turn this off when the user runs the report, a new screen would come up and let the user enter those parameters. The user can also very easily add filters. So we can go in here and let's say we want to uh, add a filter by region. I can just click that. Uh, and add that, re that uh, filter right over here in the side panel without trying to put it somewhere on the report. And then let's say we want just uh, Europe and North America. All of the items on the report are updated uh, to just show uh, those two regions. So we're now, you can see, uh, everything has, has been up updated in um, uh, with the report. So I don't need to go individually through each component on the report and change the filter. I can change the filter for everything uh, just right in one place. 
Okay, let's uh, exit this report. So this gives you some of the ideas of the standard reports that you could build and publish. But let's say uh, the user wants to build a report that uh, you haven't even thought of yet. So there's nothing they can go in and modify. Uh, so they can go in and build a new ad hoc report. So you can provide a template for them and they can choose the template that has things like the uh, information that you always want to have available on the report including page numbers and the title and maybe the author. So let's just put in uh, my name here and then do next. And let's split this up a little bit so you can uh, design this so that you have any combination of uh, parts in here similar to the CAN report series in of our sales year. And the value that we want uh, is our total sales uh, split out by those. We also have all these different uh, chart types. So there's uh, many different chart types that we use. I'm just going to use the uh, clustered bar to start with. And you can see that we now define this first section. I'll do next and we'll go to the table. And let's take uh, some detail information like the product ID and product name and then some order information about the order date. And uh, oops, let me do that again. And the cost and quantity in our invoice total and unit price. Let's put the invoice total at the bottom. And let's group this by customer. And then for each customer, uh, we want to see the total sales. And we can put that either in the footer or the header and we can tell it where to put that. So we want it, uh, the total sales in the total column. Let's go ahead and do next and I can choose the style we want. Uh, so you can add your own styles. You can remove the ones that are here. These are just cascading style sheets. Uh, so it's very easy for you to build your own or modify ours. So here's our report. We can go over into edit mode. And if we want to add additional things to it, for instance, a filter control like uh, some of the samples I showed you, we can put those uh, directly in the report. And now we have uh, a filter control we can use to update uh, everything on the report. Uh, so uh, you can see that the end user can very quickly build these dashboard style reports with uh, filters and uh, tables and cross tabs and, and charts uh, just like the predefined ones. Uh, we can also save this. So if I do save here, I'll save this over into my reports. So every user has a my reports section. Okay, it should have. There we go. And so let's just overwrite this one that uh, was already out here. So click OK. Okay, so we've saved it. And I'll go ahead and exit. Okay, so let's take a look at the next feature that we've mentioned, and this is J-Dashboard. Uh, so here's a sample dashboard that has been either built by the user himself, or you can pre-build those and provide them.
So this dashboard uh, shows a Google map. We also support, besides Google Maps, the open source street maps and bicycle maps. Uh, we can click uh, directly uh, on the map to filter other components. So if I click on uh, Europe Hero, you'll see that the other uh, components here are uh, filtered down. I can also uh, move the uh, section of data that I want to see here uh, and narrow down to uh, just particular uh, parts of it if I want. Uh, and I can also move anything on here. So unlike a report, the user can rearrange these and even delete them. So uh, let's delete that and then I'll open uh, my reports here and we'll take the uh, chart object that I just created and drop this onto the report. So you can see this is the object that we just created a few minutes ago and I can resize this. Everything is completely dynamic size-wise. So I can resize it and uh, stick it into my dashboard. And we now have this new component that I just created uh, using ad hoc uh, onto our dashboard. And if I want, I can save this dashboard to be my uh, permanent dashboard in the future. Uh, dashboards have a lot of other, <clears throat> other functionality too. So this is a dashboard that shows real uh, Medicare data from 2008 through 2012 by the various states. Uh, and so the, the chart automatically has three dimensions as a bubble chart. So the bubble size is the volume of uh, Medicare claims. The axis, uh, x-axis is the size of each claim, average size, and this is the total amount of claims uh, for each of the different states. And I can just click the play button here and we can see over time how the Medicare charges have changed uh, for each state. So now we can see four dimensions uh, on this individual chart. We also support real-time charts, so if you have real-time data uh, coming in very fast from something, uh, say uh, stock prices or something like that, you can also do it as a real-time chart, and you can see the, the chart dynamically uh, move as the data comes in. <coughs> okay, so uh, that's the uh, little bit about uh, J Dashboard. <coughs> Let's take a look at that visual analysis that we talked about. So visual analysis is our newest tool, and it lets you uh, take data from these same data sources, and we can look at them a couple of different ways. Here's uh, a flat view of it. And I'll go in and click our worldwide sales data here that we've been doing. And let's take a look at, for instance, uh, sales. So I can drop this into my text amount here, and we can see our total uh, sales uh, for this entire query that we did. And I can take the region and split it up by region. And let's say then I want to uh, take these, do, see it by year. I can drag year in here. And let's say we want to split up each of the years by quarter. Okay, so very quickly, uh, you can see that we have that data. If I want to, I can change the uh, color scheme. I can also even add more things in. So for instance, I could add total cost in. So we can compare total costs uh, with the uh, total sales. I can uh, then just easily drag that off. Uh, let's go ahead then and rotate the cross tab so we can move it around kind of like a pivot table uh, in Excel. And let's take our total sales and drag it over to 
uh, are rows over here. And now you can see that it switched from text over to a, uh, a bar chart. We can then uh, take this uh, bar chart, uh, add um, sales month. So let's go down to even more detail. So now we can see year, we can see the quarter, and we can see actually all of the months down here at the bottom. And let's go ahead and rotate it. And we now have a bench chart. Uh, we can then uh, color this. So let's say we want to see another dimension because it is a chart. We can actually see a multi another dimension. And I'll drag the color in here. And you can see that we, we now have all the information uh, split out uh, by each of the categories. Let's rotate it back to a bar chart. And we can change the type here to a line chart. OK, and let's go ahead and take uh, our sales year off and our sales quarter and our region. And now you can see uh, all of the uh, information uh, showing total sales uh, split out in a line chart. Let's say we want to make it uh, by product type rather than category. I can simply drop that in. It's now by category. So you can see that uh, we can very easily look at this data very dynamically, very interactively, uh, drag and drop new things on. Uh, we, can, we can also do as, as, uh, this as a pie chart as well and as, as different images. So uh, visual analysis is a very powerful tool to let you go in to uh, see this data. And even if this is uh, millions of records, it's going to be very fast like this because we can use an in-memory cube and all of the data, uh, all of these uh, dimensions and the measures that we put in, in here have already been uh, pre-allocated and, and predefined uh, with an either in-memory or on-disk cube. We can use either one and get that data very quickly without uh, going back to the database each time. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much the uh, demo that I wanted to show. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it back to uh, Craig and see if uh, there's any questions. Great, thanks so much, Greg. Uh, so before uh, before we get started here, uh, you know, continuing and, and just you know finishing up, I wanted to uh, you know sort of make an announcement to request that you could possibly change your uh, your your display name in the GoToMeeting uh, window. And I sent out a, uh, a message about this. It seems that there's some glitch today where we see duplicates of certain people. Um, you know, there's there's dis description there of how to fix it. If you go to File Preferences and change your uh, session identity, that'll help us you know 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 who you are a lot better. Uh, so we'd really appreciate if you went ahead and did that. And uh, we really uh, you know um, let me go ahead and change uh, presenter back to me, Greg. Okay. So also wanted to uh, you know take one one second after you're done changing your session uh, identity there to put some poll questions up on the screen. Uh, we have a few quick questions for you to answer. Uh, you know, Dean, go ahead and uh, and throw those on the screen if possible. Really appreciate it if you took the time to answer these. It should take about 20 seconds. Okay, so thank you so much for uh, taking the time to uh, fill out those poll questions today. Uh, just some next steps here. Uh, moving on, uh, we uh, you know we encourage you to go to our website. Go ahead and try JReport 12. You can download JReport, uh, the newest version, right there, and try all the features that you've seen today. You can sign up for our daily live demos. Where we actually have a daily live demo every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, you know for more info. Uh, visit Ginfinet.com, and we'd be happy to set up a, a demonstration as well. So we actually have uh, you know a few Q and A's that have come in during this webinar today. I just wanted to take some time to to go over those. We'd also encourage you to send in any questions you have whatsoever. Uh, there's a questions box on the right side there. 
we're we're going to be staying uh, you know stay in for another 15 minutes here answering every question you have. Uh, so I wanted to highlight a couple. And uh, Greg, can you can you hear me okay there? I just want to make sure your mic's working all right. Uh, yes, I'm here. Great. Give me one one second here. Greg. Yes. I'm Great. Here. Okay. Great. So we have a couple a uh, couple Q and A questions for you to answer uh, while people send in uh, send in their other ones. Uh, here's here's the first one. Uh, you mentioned supporting in memory cubes for visual analysis. How is the cube created? Do you need a special star schema or OLAP da database? Oh, okay. Yes, I, I did mention that. Um, actually, you don't need to do any work at all. In JReport Server, one of the features is that uh, there's a cube uh, creation uh, service there. So what you do is you go into the server and just say to use the metadata, what we call a business view that you've already created, uh, to build these reports and dashboards. And you tell it to uh, create an in-memory cube, or you can specify that it be an on-disk cube if it's going to be uh, too large for your memory. And uh, it just creates it directly from the relational queries that uh, underline the uh, business view. And it uh, does a very highly compressed version of the uh, measures in dimensions. It ignores all the uh, detail information. And then you can put that into the cube. And then if that cube exists, then visual analysis will automatically use that cube data. Uh, visual analysis can also be used directly against the relational data, too, although it's not as highly recommended if you have a lot of uh, data because uh, it's going to impact that. But uh, uh, we recommend that you, you build that cube, and then you can have as many people doing the visual analysis as you want, and it won't impact your database at all. Okay, thanks, Greg. Question number two here. We have a different database connection for each of our customers. Does JReport require that we modify each report to set the database connection and user login and password? Uh, no, uh, that's one of the reasons why we're so popular with uh, software as a service and OEM type uh, applications is the uh, catalog connection is kept completely uh, independent of the report templates themselves. So you can build all the reports, uh, you can create the reports, even new ad hoc reports, and those reports can uh, use the connection uh, specified by the server itself uh, that uh, you want to use in that that is in what we call a catalog kind of like a repository uh, so it's independent of the template so whatever uh, template that that uh, links to that catalog will automatically change the to use the connection in the catalog but even beyond that you can uh, just put that in the uh, using the API or using the uh, interface from your application you can pass in the connection information each time a user runs a report so uh, based on the, the user ID or the company that the user is with uh, you can dynamically uh, change the connection uh, directly when you run that report uh, based on who the user is okay got it and the third question here is, <clears throat> if our customers modify a report or create a new ad hoc report that we want to share with other customers, can we access them to update and share with other customers? Uh, sure. So one of the features of, of JReport is that the ad hoc reports that are created on the server are 100% compatible with the reports that you create in JReport Designer, which is the desktop application where you build your metadata in your predefined reports. So JReport Designer lets you go out, connect to the server dynamically, and uh, browse to uh, the uh, folder where you want on the server to uh, download that information and go get the reports that uh, end users have created themselves. You can download that. You can then modify those in Designer if you want to make them more generic. And then you can publish those back to public folders for everyone to use. So it's completely symmetrical. Uh, you, can, you can go back and forth and do, uh, modify the report either in, in Designer or in the server, and they're totally compatible. 
Okay, thanks, Greg. Now, shifting gears for one second here from the questions, we have one final poll question to put up. If you take, you know, 30 seconds just to go ahead and uh, answer that. Dean, you can go ahead and throw that up on the uh, screen. Any other second? Okay. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to do that. Now, uh, you know, moving forward here, we're, we're at the end of our webinar for today, but we're going to be on for another, uh, you know, 18 minutes. We're going to be on to about 3.10 Eastern this afternoon, answering any of your questions. Uh, we have Greg uh, and Dean answering questions here today, and we'll make sure we get to every one of your questions. So, you know, thank, thank you very much for, for coming today. It's, uh, you know, it's the end of the year, so I just wanted to say happy holidays. We hope we get a, a chance to, to schedule a follow-up with you uh, and show you a more detailed demonstration. Uh, you can always reach us uh, the information on the screen there. And uh, happy holidays and and uh, and thanks again.